Okay, so what we've just proved is that markets can achieve a Pareto efficient allocation. This proof, I did sort of a graphical analysis proof, but like the very rigorous thing has also been proved for much more general cases. And uh, it goes under the heading of something called the first welfare theorem. Okay, and the first welfare theorem of economics is essentially that um, market outcomes are Pareto efficient under a certain set of assumptions. Remember, Pareto efficient means that what the market comes up with, there's no way we can make it better for anyone unless we make it worse for someone else in the market. Okay? So the key though is this is under some assumptions. So we'll say under the following assumptions. And we will revisit these at the end of this section and then throughout the rest of the course. We need complete markets. Everything that is a good or an input that is used in production or a good that people that affects their utility can be allocated using the market. There's nothing out there that uh, that can't be bought or sold. And this is really easy. Like I can give a very simple proof for why this would be the case. Suppose we have an Edgeworth box and we're sitting here and uh, this is the allocation we're at for Alice and Bob. We've got Bob up here. These are their utility functions or their indifference curves. All right, and this is suppose this is food for Alice, food for Bob, and so on. Okay, and shelter for Alice, and shelter for Bob. We can see here that there's a Pareto dominant, like this is not a Pareto efficient allocation because this is Alice's utility, and this is Bob's utility, and this region in here is better for both of them, okay? So they should try to move in there. And a market would do that, okay? There would be some level of prices that we could, like if this was the price line, then basically Alice could move to this frontier and Bob could move to this one and they'd be at a Pareto efficient allocation. Wonderful. What happens though if this society does not believe that food should be traded on the market. They believe that food is too important to be left to market devices or that since it's something that is life-giving, it's obscene or disgusting to trade it on markets. If that's the case, then given these two goods, these guys are kind of locked in this corner here. Like, I'm sorry, not there. The allocation of food that they've come up with can't be changed via a market, right? And so they're kind of stuck. Where's my cursor? Here. They could still trade shelter, but now, like, if they can only trade shelter, there's not really any, there's like no reason any of them would trade shelter, right? Because uh, if Bob wants some, Alice has to give some up. She can't be compensated with food. And so the whole thing kind of breaks down. They're stuck at this allocation. There could be an improvement, but they can't, all right? So, Given all that, if we don't have complete markets, if we're missing markets for some goods, this theory breaks down. And it's not just for those goods, it can also sort of break down for, it can have sort of knock-on effects, okay? And of course you might think, well, why would we, you know, that's silly. We're gonna, they're gonna, who cares about trading food and having a market for allocated food? But there are other goods that we don't feel like it's appropriate to have markets for, like organs, for example, okay? Some countries do, some countries don't. And that's one example of something that, hey, it affects utility, uh, but we, some people think using a market to change for that stuff is a bad idea, okay? So that's the first assumption. What's the next one? The next one, we're gonna append this and sort of make even stricter assumptions. So everything can be bought and sold without transaction costs. So what are transaction costs? These are the costs of using the market to allocate goods basically, okay? Suppose we've got 
again, this situation where they're up in this corner and we want to get them to this point here. But suppose that spending time going to the market, haggling, securing delivery of the right thing, it just, it takes a lot of effort, okay? It might take so much effort that it's not worth the increase in utility that they get from going here. And then this sort of favorable trade doesn't happen. So we need complete markets with frictionless, easy trade, okay? It can't be hard to use the markets. Transaction cost, yeah, it's like, you know, costs people have to pay to access the market and the people who uh, pay the, like, it's not like I'm compensating you, like paying you these costs. It's like my own lost time. We also need perfect information, okay? So we need everyone to have the same information we don't we can't have different people accessing different prices or special deals or whatever like that uh, everybody needs to know kind of the set of options so that they can optimize and as we saw above it's very important for everyone to face the same prices because that ensures they all set their marginal rate of substitution equal to each other okay all right so we need to have markets they need to be easy to use and everybody has to have access to them what else we need um, all consumers and firms to be price takers. Nobody can have market power. Nobody can affect the price for everybody else through their own decision. Okay, so everybody needs to take the price as given and not think that they can influence the price by their decision to withhold production or uh, try to corner the market and, and things like that. Okay. Third, we need something called, I've run out of space to write. We need preferences to have local non-satiation. And this is a technical one that I won't spend as much time on, but essentially we need our consumers to be like, uh, to be kind of pursuing, like they want to, they have to want to trade. They can't get like stuck, uh, having everything they want and like not really wanting to go to the market anymore and trade with other people who might be better off uh, if those people could like trade. Okay. We can't have a bunch of Buddhas sitting around who uh, are happy and then a bunch of people who want to trade with the Buddhas, but like uh, the Buddhas just aren't interested. But Hey, given these sort of reasonable assumptions, essentially that markets are competitive, uh, pervasive and easy to use, the market, this, the first welfare theorem says the market is going to do an ex excellent job allocating resources efficiently. Okay. It's going to ensure that there's no slack and no way that things could be better if we uh, intervened and took over the market and reallocated ourselves. Okay. Now let's turn to the four problems that, you know, cause before we said, Hey, we also know how to get this outcome with a supercomputer. We know the conditions. We don't need a market. Do markets offer anything better? And let's turn to those four problems of using like a centrally planned supercomputer to decide the plan. And that had four problems and we'll see that the market sol almost solves all these problems.